I'm gonna tell you how I made my crosscut table saw sled. What is a crosscut table saw sled? Let me show you. Come on, jump right into how I built this and the step by step instructions. Just give us a click in the top corner, and that's gonna take you straight to the instructions to skip the hows and the whys. When you get into cutting smaller pieces of wood, your guide may not be big enough, and either your hands get really close to the blade, or you just can't make the cut. That's where a crosscut table saw sled is going to come in. I built a few things for my shop, and they were very plain. I did not want another tool that was plain. I wanted something that had a little bit of style. So I decided to make this Fallout inspired since the Fallout 4 just came out. Now, of course, I did a lot of extras to this design. They are obviously not required, but it makes it a lot more fun because, again, I'm tired of looking at plain tools. The base of the sled is 18 inches by 24 inches. The front guard is 3 quarter inch plywood as well. That is 5 inches tall by 24 inches wide. That is just glued on top and then you have these gussets that act to brace it so that everything is square and secure. You want to make sure your front and rear guards are square. You can use an angle to make sure that they are. Now the most crucial thing about the sled is making sure that the rear guard is square to the blade because if you cannot make square cuts this sled will do you no good whatsoever. The rear guard is 24 inches wide by 3 inches tall, this front piece. The rear piece is 3 and 3 eighths inches tall because I have a rabbit cut into the base and cut into this piece. And that rabbit interlocks the front and back so you have a really stable connection. These rear ears are just glued on for the hoses. It's a 3 quarter inch puck and a half inch puck that the 3 quarter inch split loom is epoxy to. Again, another 3 quarter inch puck and a half inch puck. This is purely decorative. The handles are 3 quarter inch PVC. I used a Forstner bit to drill the hole and that PVC is about 5 inches long. 2 inches of it is embedded into the guard. It doubles as a pencil holder because I'm always putting my pencil down, forgetting where it is. This way I know exactly where to find it. And this is just guard so that you, the blade is not exposed to the rear of the sled. The rear blade guard measures overall 3 inches by 5 inches and this is again 3 quarter inch plywood. I chamfer the edges to get it a nice angled look, make it look like it's a metal cover. The bolts are number six hex head screws. I've got hex head bolts throughout, sizes number six and number four. These dials are from a rotary dial lock. I drilled out the rivets of the lock, removed the dials. I did a plunge bit router to create a groove here, and they just sit in there, and the dials do turn. This is a .060 inch piece of polystyrene cut to fit the dials that holds it in place. This front guard is 16th inch metal with number four hex head screws. This is a piece of 10 gauge wire that is drilled into this puck and drilled into the rear guard. These are Christmas tree lights. I took out the bulbs and they are epoxied in place. Hole saw bit. That is a two inch bit. This is a power switch from, I believe, a kitchen exhaust fan. It's epoxy on the back. The wires die into the wood. These are the runners. What I did, I assembled the entire sled and then I cut the groove in the middle of it using the blade and I made sure it was square before I cut it. Then I placed the runners in the channels of my table saw. You're going to want to take those measurements and you want the runners very snug. If they wiggle at all, you need to toss them and recut some new ones because you want those perfectly snug because you do not want your sled to wobble. I wax my runners so that it slides very smoothly within the channels. For all the edge grain, I typically use drywall compound. In this case, I used body filler because it's going to be a little bit more durable since this thing is going to get used. I primer the entire sled, then I spray painted it silver. I taped off the silver, and then I added mustard. Everywhere it looks like the green paint is flaking off, that's where I applied mustard, and then I sprayed green. The mustard is going to dry up, get a little crusty, then it's going to wipe right off, take the green, and then it looks like your green paint is flaking. To create the model appearance of this thing is dirty and used, I used white, black, and burgundy spray paint. I lightly misted it. We want to be fairly close when spraying the silver and green. When you're misting it and you want that model color, you want to be quite a bit farther away. You just want a light mist on the sled. I did go back. I took some mineral spray and so I'd wipe off in areas to get it looking cleaner in other areas and dirty. You want a layered appearance. My fallout, my crosscut text, that is a stencil. I printed out the papers, put spray adhesive on the back glued it to there, sprayed it, and then took it off. My radioactive symbol is freehand, as is my vault boy. I used black enamel paint, and I put it into all the cracks and crevices around each screw, around the wires and lights, and I wipe it off 
So you get a little bit of paint residue so that it looks like grime is accumulating. This thing has been around a while. Once it was done, I clear coated it and then I used a satin finish so it gives it a little bit of an appearance of metal. And that's how I made my Fallout inspired cross cut table saw sled. And now, I think it's time for lunch. Alright, you can go now. Lunch time.